Shall we play a game? Hello. How we doing? Hopefully you can hear me. It sounds very loud to me. Sound adjustment, actually. I can't tell whether you do that. Hopefully it works. Anyway, I have um, adjusted my bucking settings after last week, so hopefully you can hear me. go. Okay. Pull up. <laughs> Today we're looking at Glossop. Are we looking at Glossop? We're looking at Glossop. Yes. On very bad days. Yes. Tell. Mm. Anyway, let's find Manchester, Hadfield and Glossop. Now, you've probably played the services to death on the stream. Is my volume is not great. It's oh. This might help. How's that? Is that better? My microphone was this far. That far. A bit more than that, actually, away. Does that help? Is that better? Hopefully it's better. If it's not, I can see the ducking is actually working. Actually, I've gone red now. It's too good. <laughs> How's that? Hello, Mark B. Hello, Dave Randall. Hello, Michael Newberry. Okay, volume's better. Hello, Emmanuel. Good. Um, I'm going to run two of the scenarios, which I think are fun. As you can see, I've played them all, of course. Um, why aren't I connected to Dovetail Live? Yeah, whatever. I hope I'm in the right version. It doesn't say Dev, I'm safe. <laughs> I got worried for a moment there. It's just dropped out of Dovetail Live. That does happen. First up, we're going to play Waterworks. I thought we might do um, a bit of freight. Hmm. So we're just hanging around here. We're going to go visit our man. G'day, man. How you doing? Mr. Northern Man. Talk to the platform dispatcher. Where's his paddle? Morning, driver. As you know, a burst water pipe has caused major flooding near Fairfield Station. We have no choice but to cancel most of the scheduled services. However, as your train is in operation, you have been given permission to proceed. Electricity and water, that all mix so well. Speed restrictions have been put in place in the surrounding area, so keep that in mind. Do we obey speed restrictions? Mm, probably. Alright, see you later, Mr. Man. What's up with your neck? Just walk straight through that lady. Oh well. Let's get in our train before some pesky AI pinches it. Sitting down. Oh, made it up the Windows menu. Master key. Let's get it into neutral for now. Let's get some doors open. And yeah, a bit of headlights. We don't want tail lights on. Hopefully, we have tail lights at the other end. We might just pop down the other end and make sure we've got tail lights on, actually, since it's a scenario. And look at that. We do now. But we didn't. Alright, doors closing. Now, is that rain real outside? Is it raining outside right now? Or is it raining on top of the roof of the station? I don't know. Hmm. Yes, Dave Randall, this is the scenario with a worker standing in a huge puddle next to the overhead power lines. Now, interestingly enough, some of you know that my full-time regular kind of job, when I'm not doing railway stuff and I'm not doing photography, is... Um, in the water industry and one of my favorite moments was a um a car that ran over a fire hydrant and that fire hydrant was launching its water up into a high voltage transformer on top of a power pile and was gradually smashing it to pieces and there was arcing and sparking and there was lots of water workers standing around this thing going what do we do because to turn it off we have to get in it <laughs> 
and the power people turned up and they didn't want to touch it because of the water and the water people didn't want to touch it because of the power so basically we all just stood around staring at it for about three hours meh <laughs> kind of funny naturally enough of course all that water's going somewhere and it was running down the hill and flooding some poor chick's house she was not happy and then they told her to turn it off This is life. These things happen sometimes. The other exciting thing about that one is the uh, hydrant was actually dead set on the boundary between two different water authorities as well. And they were arguing. So on top of do we touch it or not because it's got live power. Do we touch the power or not because it's got water. On top of that there was two water authorities arguing which over which one of them the hydrant belonged to. And they both turned up to the gig. Eh, what can you do? So on this lovely rainy morning, we shall uh, cruise along. I think we're allowed to do 30 now, 35 or something. We're going to slow down for the corner up there, but apart from that, we should be fine. How is everyone? And I popped in a poll today, because I would like to bring the quiz back, and I've been looking at some options ranging from a Google form hello lexic dark yes very much a tank girl thing although tank girl wasn't there that would have been quite cool everybody needs to meet a tank girl at some point we all know one it's very important that you meet and interact with the tank girl and if you don't know what I'm talking about go watch the movie tank girl it's cool it's old but it's cool I might watch it today. I haven't seen it for ages. Alright, off we go through the platform that no one's ever at. Bing! Past the Ardwick Yards here on our left. So if we... Look up in the sky, there's Ardwick Yards, which quite a few of the services start at, or finish at. I put up a tutorial yesterday for a cold and dark start, as requested by a community member. And interestingly, that's had, um, in, in the, t well, it's less than 24 hours since that went up, that's actually had more hits than the mainstream tutorial I put up, which went up, what, a week ago? Yeah, I know what he uses, Doth, but I've been looking at various options, so um, stay tuned. Coming into Ashbury's. This wonderful, bright and sunny morning. I can tell that my voice is sounding a little, uh, a little coldish this morning. That's not good. I was actually hoping to go back into the office in person tomorrow. I've just had a week off. I've been working, but I've been working from home because uh, I had a cold, but I kind of thought I was getting better, but maybe not. Hmm. So who's got Glossop so far? What do you think of it? And while you digest that question, Emmanuel Perez thinks the train is simply hideous. I think the train is actually very exact to the 323, so if you think it's hideous, you probably hate the 323. What don't you like about it, Emmanuel? I watched lots of videos of the 323, and in the beta team, there's a 323's driver and a 323 guard who both say it's um, extremely accurate. So curious what you don't like. Maybe you just don't like the 323. That's certainly possible. Off we go to Guide Bridge. You don't like the face. But you don't like this bit. That's just a pretty modern train, really. Is 
There's another 323 coming the other way. As you do. Say hello to your mates. Michael has it and finds it enjoyable. I've used an app called Mentimeter before for this sort of thing. Um, at the free level, I believe I can only have 10 questions, but um, I'd probably trial it at the free level, and if it works okay, if people seem to like it, I would be happy enough to buy a subscription to it. What's that, Dave Randall? You think the 323 runs might be getting like a job? Well, yes. <laughs> While I, um, I have sat down and we're not actually stopping at this station, I'm starting to slow down. Um, while I have actually run a whole day's shift in the game, it is like a job. And if it's the kind of thing that you can play for your enjoyment and run a whole shift, good on you. I know British Ace, Ace loves doing it and, you know, good on him. That's his kind of thing. You are now approaching Fairfield. Keep in mind speed restrictions are in effect. And be sure to reduce your speed and proceed with caution. Uh-oh. Tessa. Temporary speed restriction. There we go. And go back to normal braking now. It's one thing I do like about this train. Ah. Actually, I was just about to say it doesn't actually make you stop if you go into emergency. But look at that. It did. Oh well. <laughs> Eight to twelve hours, Emmanuel. My shift on the steam engines at Puffing Billy is eleven to twelve hours, depending on which run I do. If I do Jembrook, it's eleven. If I do the double leg side or the lunch train, it's 12. Starts at 6am, finishes at 6pm. Looks like we're approaching our problem here in the distance. Dave Fan Randall finds it's weird because he can run the HST on Midland Mainline all day long. Yeah. Well, there is there's the... Um, it could be the sounds the train makes. It's a bit whiny, or is the HST more of a bass thuddy sort of sound? So the I don't know about you guys, but I find whiny sounds a little bit annoying. I prefer a sort of a bassy noise. Yes, Mark B, lots of short runs. Good for when you don't have a lot of free time, definitely. I do like short runs. Some of you have seen me stream the odd thing at lunchtime, and I've only got about 25 minutes if I want to actually eat something. So I, um, I can pop into this one and run something for 25 minutes. It's great. Now, he should really be acknowledging me there. And not turning his back. Naughty rail worker... They are supposed to proceed to their position of safety and acknowledge you. Hello, TOC. Welcome. We're just crawling into this station. Not that we're going to stop here. We're going to leave all these people here with their umbrellas. But we are going to stop just past all these signs because, you know, you have to go and jump in the water. It's a kid in the puddles thing. You have to do it. Dave Randall is addicted to Peak Forest and determined to finish the timetable. Ah. I bet you're glad they made the uh, F4 sound a bit quieter. You know, you have to do this. You really do. G'day, mate. What seems to be the trouble? That, maybe? What if you just, uh, 
I don't know. What if you just put your finger in it? Wouldn't that stop it? It doesn't look like a very big hole. Whee! Have my shower. I only wash once a month. I can have it for free now. Interestingly enough, working in the water industry, um, when I first saw this scenario, this pipe was massive. And I pointed out to them that a pipe that size would have been shooting meter about water about 200, 250 meters into the air. And I sent them some video of a pipe that size shooting water into the, into the air and they made the pipe smaller. It's really cool. And it's much more realistic now. The other really interesting thing about this is a stream of water like that is so destructive. If you park that excavator on top of it, it would chew its way through the excavator. So uh, water's very, very destructive, and he would not be standing there. But anyway, that's okay. Let's go and drive this. This is a fairly run-of-the-mill run after this. Should we be nice to those passengers? No. Let's go. And there's another rail worker who should be not turning his back to the train, but should be facing the train and going, Hi, I see ya. Put duct tape on it, why not? Duct tape solves everything. Metra says, here's the most cringest route ever made. Well, that's pretty funny from a man who's never had one. But what? <laughs> Lexic Dark just spit his coffee everywhere. Is this the end marker? Or is this a continuation marker? It's an end marker. Yay! Off we go. Back to full bananas. Dave Randall is off to bed. Good day, mate. Sleep well? Just out of interest, what sort of other times would folks watch a stream? Just chuck some times in the chat. No guarantees, but we'll just see. Making some coffee, Lexic Dark. I had a very nice espresso just a few moments ago, and I have uh, now progressed to a, to a cup of tea. Hello, Chris. How are you? For those who are wondering, Lexic Dark and I do actually know each other. He lives out in the bush. Well, kind of out in the bush. Sort of a civilised part of the bush, I suppose, but it is the bush. And coming into Guide Bridge. You usually don't watch streams, Metra. That's strange, you're in nearly every one of mine. You're welcome to watch, by the way. I know you drop in and out, that's fine. I have absolutely no dramas with that. So what are people up to this weekend? Anyone doing any rail fanning? I weirdly have not been firing a steam engine this weekend, and even more weirdly, I'm not firing a steam engine next weekend. Given I nearly do it every weekend. Uh, Omar can't wait for the Class 700 preview this Thursday. This DLC will take the game to the next level. Hmm, the 700. up in the train. The, the interesting thing about the 700, go watch it on YouTube and listen to the noise it makes. To me, the 700 sounds kind of like a car alarm going off. Naturally enough, I will be streaming it. Mark B likes an early evening stream. What time is it for you now, Mark B? Mm. 
graffitied and wondering if it was actually locking the doors then. Just to give me an idea, if everybody pops what time it is now into the chat locally for you. Max 1319 can't wait for July's roadmap. Ooh. You think there's some good stuff coming, Max? It's 5.53 for Metro, so it's almost 6 o'clock for you. And I know you're in Chicago. 7 p.m. for Mark B, 4 p.m. for Michael Newberry. It's almost midnight for Omar. Kudos to you, Omar. Whoops, I'm going a bit fast. And Max is looking for the, the New York transit timetable as well. Coming into Flowery Field. TOC volunteered at the Heritage Railway at work today and riding up and down tomorrow as we've got two steam locos running. Magic. Now, well, I'm not firing this weekend because I had something else to do and next weekend it's my mother-in-law's birthday so I didn't, didn't roster anything for next weekend because I never know what day they're going to do something on. So I just kept them both clear. And the weekend after... I'm going out with our lead examiner. I just noticed something back there. Let's just put the brakes on on this train so it stops in the platform. I just noticed something I've never noticed before. That is foul of the track. Where's my bloody cursor gone? I just want to grab... I know you can't see what I'm doing. I just wanted to grab a screenshot of that so I can put a report in for it. What station is this? It's the station on the other line. Hyde North. Very good. And of course the train stopped outside the station. I know you guys couldn't see me taking a screenshot there because of the way I run captures now, which is good. that before. It's the kind of thing I actually look out for when I'm vadering stuff, but uh, never noticed it. Isn't that sad? Hmm. So, yeah, my next run on the, the Heritage Railway property, really, is with our lead examiner, where he's going to decide whether I can examine as fireman or not. It sounds like a rigmarole, it sounds like a test to pass a test, but um, basically they won't examine you if they think you won't pass, because they want to give you the best chance that you can have. So they just tell you whether you're ready or not. an interesting thing because I initially started firing back in I think 2008 and I never finished the training back then and I took it up again fairly recently about I don't know 20 weeks ago 25 weeks ago something like that Guns all hiding behind the fence. Or as they call them in some places, foamers. A few people in the UK. Very good. Almost midnight. Omar also likes the uh, possibilities the 700 will bring. Omar says, next week's roadmap should define and reveal the Just Trains new route. Does anyone have any clue what the route could be? 
Brad asks, is the chief examiner susceptible to a small bribe? No. <laughs> no. Even though we're a heritage railway, um, we do run under the same regulator. We have a... We come under the Transport Act. We have an Act of Parliament that establishes our right to operate as a railway. So we are very much a real railway. So they... Um, it's not like the old days where if you weren't very good at something, they'd pass you anyway and they'd always make sure you were out with someone who could help look after you and make sure that it went well for the day. They can't do that anymore. Because you never know when the regulator is actually there. They quite often ride our trains. They just buy a ticket like the many member of the public does and they ride the train and they observe. They observe everything you do. In some ways it's changed the railway for the worse because it's a little bit less fun than it used to be. But in other ways they've changed the railway for the better because now it's... Uh, always a strong professional operation Be quiet train hello how you doing Ooh. twins look at that just like that two people look exactly the same all fun time to go Brad asks the fireman have to learn the route as well as the driver better you actually have to know the route better than the driver does because you need to know what the driver needs before the driver knows they need it. So if you know they're going to need more steam or less steam in a particular area, you have to be ready for it. And you have to be ready for it a couple of minutes before it's actually needed. TOC says, I don't know what the coal situation is like in Australia, but kind of concerned of the supply of coal and continuing running of steam locos. It'd be a shame to see them go. We are also concerned about that. Um, we have five main line, I say main line, we're two foot six, but it is main line for us, um, operating steam locos. We have a whole lot of other ones that are in the wings that operate occasionally or are just sitting around in dry storage. Um, and yes, coal is on the mind. Not only because it could become hard to get in the not too distant future. We're only talking about well, it's 10 years away before they want to close all coal mines in this country. And while they would probably allow the heritage sector to continue to use coal simply because it's the heritage sector, the reality is if a mining company is not making billions of dollars pulling the shit out of the ground and sending it off to India and China, because we don't use that much of it in Australia anymore, um, apart from in our steel processes, and there's still a few coal power stations, but not a lot. If they're not making that money, there's not a chance on this planet that they're going to service the heritage rail sector on its own, because there's not enough money in it. They just couldn't do it. Because we need a particular grade of coal. We need really good coal, and they wouldn't be interested. We have converted one of our engines, and it sounds sacrilegious, but it actually burns diesel. So it's got a big diesel tank, it has the traditional firebox, and there's burners in the, in the firebox. But it costs almost twice as much to run that as it does to run on coal. And they chose diesel because it's easy to get, and because we've got diesel locomotives, we already have a supply of diesel. We already have the tanks on site and all those sorts of things. They did think about running bunker oil, which is the stuff they use in ships. But we would have to set up a whole new infrastructure for that, and we'd have to put in more tanks, and we'd have to have heating infrastructure because the stuff's like treacle. It doesn't actually flow until you make it hot. Um, we would also have to preheat it, which is a problem on steam engines. How do you preheat something before you've got a fire? Which would imply that you'd actually need two ways of fueling it. Diesel and... The bunker oil. So yeah, it's problematic. I 
Omar says, Just Train's route has been kept a secret for three months. More than that. <laughs> yeah, it's been in development for a while. I'm happy to talk about that there is a Just Train's route, because you know that much. I can't talk about anything else. Because I will only get in trouble. And they take away that little blue thing down in the corner. Oops, I have to stop the corner fence. I forgot. It's not the end of the platform, this one. It's here. Made it. Is that a flower pot that I haven't actually filled? Oh no, it's got flowers in it. I have filled that one. TOC likes driving up and down this route. Red Arrow, how are you? I do kind of like the 323. Um, we've got it on two routes now. I kind of like driving it. It's a really simple train to drive. And I think it, it's a really good entry point into the game. So if someone was to drive the 323 first, they're probably more likely to drive and stick with the game and learn some of the more complex things than if they popped in and say an ICE 3. I think I just opened the doors on the left hand side. Oh, I think I did. Yes I did. I'm very clever. Alright, we've got them both closing now. There we go. Because I do remember early in the game's history I jumped into an ICE 3 and I thought, hey this thing looks really cool. And it basically sat there yelling at me in German for five minutes while I tried to figure out how to make it start. And I eventually gave up. I actually couldn't make it start on that first try. And I have to say, it wasn't a very pleasant experience to have this thing just yelling at me in German, using words I didn't understand. Which, incidentally, I do now. Thank you, Lexic Duck. I actually know what the train wants now. But, you know, subtitles would be cool. Off we go to Broadbottom, which, as usual, reminds me of a Queen song. Red Arrow would also like to see the 802. Why the 802 in particular, Red Arrow? What is it about that one that attracts you? Metra says, Shortline railroads might keep diesels after 2035 because they get older stuff which is cheaper than operate and maintain. Now look, it's really hard to say on things like that. Governments are love declaring, you know, this will happen by 2030 and this will happen by 2035, but the reality is they're doing nothing. So will those things actually happen? Well, maybe they'll happen in a hurry. Maybe they won't happen at all. Who knows? Who knows? Governments often say things because it gets them votes. And every government that's in power you might think their first consideration is for the job. It's not. Their first consideration is to make sure they get back into power next time. So they'll say what you want to hear, funnily enough. They spend a lot of money working out what we want to hear. Here we are at a broad bottom. Sit well. TOC likes driving up and down on this route. Metra also says, but steam locomotives are unlikely to be able to run on Class 1s other than UP and Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, with 2816 going across the entire system. Oh, look, the, the mainline operators hate steam engines, and they hate steam engines for a really simple reason. It's no different here, it's no different in the UK. The reason they hate them is because they break. Because they aren't used continuously, they aren't serviced continuously, they're often run by labour of love organisations, mostly staffed with volunteers, varying degrees of skill. So they have varying degrees of reliability on the engines. Some of them never break down. Some of them, even the brand new ones, Tornado broke recently. The one in the UK. So... Um, they worry about their reliability and blocking up other traffic. They're also slow, so they often pair them with a diesel, and the diesel pushes to get the thing up to speed quicker so they can run normal timetable. But gratuitous bridge shot has to be done. Well, that was my mouse then. It was not cooperating with me. 
I think Retrieval just bridge shot. I wasn't too sure about the surface on this bridge, because if we look at it, see how it's quite shiny? But then I had a look on YouTube, and it's a big metal bridge. So it kind of is like that. Maybe not that shiny. Red Arrow says, we clean the 802s. Oh, that's cool. So you work on them. And if you're cleaning trains, mate, all respect to you. That's a tough job. Because the general public are disgusting. The messes they leave behind on trains. they do to each other on trains. Even crowded busy ones. Metro is also predicting that the Amtrak will remove the charges in 2041. Aren't they new? Is that just wishful thinking because you want F40s back? Just have to acknowledge our little fixed signal up here. Should come back down to 40 as well, would be a good idea. On this rainy morning. As we approach Dinting. Dinting's a little bit weird because we are... Uh, going into a triangle. Red Arrow says, yep, and 185s as well, and that's a lot of beer. Yes. Even our Heritage Railway, we find alcohol vessels on the train from time to time. We find other things too. Things that are more involved in the things that people do to each other. Even on really crowded trains, we sometimes find them. Tinting, folks. Not only is it a triangle, it's basically built as a chicane. It's a good thing there's not a lot of traffic through here, because this would be a nightmare for a signaller. Hello, Anthony Trains. How are you? Welcome along. This in a 323 coming into Tinting. On our way to, since we're going to the right, Golossip. I do believe that umbrella just came through the side of my cab. At least the passengers can't hit me up here. Oh, I'm not too bad, Anthony Trains, 4472. Tipping you like Flying Scotsman. I think we mentioned that last week. Do we need Flying Scotsman for this game? There's a question. few engines that's actually travelled the world. You have to go a little bit slow through the triangle, sadly. TOC had a diesel gala last weekend and the trains were full to the brim. Yeah, people are getting back out there, aren't they? Our trains are always full. Our trains are booked out a couple of weeks in advance now. Which is kind of important because post-COVID, 
we're not getting any government money, so we have to have bums on every seat just to keep the railway operating, let alone actually have enough money to do the capital works that are necessary. We're at the point now where our rail is so old, we have to re-rail between Belgrave and Lakeside. Because the rail was second-hand when we put it in in the first place. Now we've got to get new rail from somewhere. And no one makes rail as small as the stuff we use. We use 60 pound rail and just no one makes it anymore. So we either have to coax the uh, rolling mill in South Australia to make it or we have to find somewhere else to buy it from. The estimate is 12 million to buy the rail, let alone put it in. Red Arrow thinks DTD did great with this DLC. Can't wait for more, and the 323 is one of the favourite northern units. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's interesting. People seem to either love the 323 or hate it. We have uh, another person in the chat that doesn't like the 323 very much. And I think if you're used to that narrow little vestibule approach where you've got this narrow view out through this slot, which might as well be an archer's slot in a castle, they're probably the ones that don't like the 323 all that much. Whereas I like a more open cab, so I quite like it. Indeed, TOC, mind the gap between the train and the umbrella. It wasn't much of a gap, was there? It came through the wall. TOC says, sure, why not? Take more steam any day. Doesn't matter what loco, if it's steam, you'll buy it. Cool. Hello, John 907i, welcome. Cheers to you too. Here's the fixed yellow signal here, because there's no point having a real signal when the next one is always red. I've clearly driven this too much, because I was slowing down to 10 before I saw the 10 sign. <laughs> clearly I have done too many runs on Gossip. sounds a bit like an F1 car, doesn't it, Red Arrow? Yes, next Lexic Dark, I can see how some people would have a preference for a, a narrow slot versus a wide open vista. like a maze I suppose if you go into the kind with uh, tall bushes then you can't really just poke your head in and have a look around It'll do. now what I can't remember is this scenario now go off to Hadfield no it doesn't it just finishes here all righty you like next? Do you want another 323 run or would you like a freight run? I've got a couple of freight runs that I'm going to do today but I could do a 323 then a freight or I could do a freight then a 323. speed much. That was nice today. But I've already got a gold medal for this. There's no point hanging around to see what the score is. Michael says freight. Okay. To the trains. Choose your route. And timetable. Let's go for a 66. Southeastern high speed 66 just because it's shiny. 6H54. Oh, I did that well, didn't I? 6. There we go. Running from Peak Forest, kind of. And why do I want to run this one in June? Why do I want to run this one in June? I can't remember why. Anyway, 
We'll do it in June. What about light clouds? Light clouds, there we go. Thanks, John. Try to be friendly. That's why I wanted to run it in June, so we could actually see stuff. Now we've got the uh, a locomotive that pretends not to be American. Uh, the brakes are cut in, which is good. Now, AWS on this one. Is it in this cabinet? Or is it in this cabinet? I never can remember. It's none of those. There must be a fuse that's off. That one. There we go. Okay. Misters off. We want daytime headlights. Tail lights are off. Instrument lights on. And we don't want our cab lights. So that's all good. We're ready to go. When it tells us we can. Welcome to the 66, otherwise known as the Shed. This fine, clear morning. Just sit here and wait. We will hurry up and wait. Or, we can go and explore while we hurry up and wait. As you do. So what have we got? Let's climb up and see what's in our carriages. In our DB Shinkers. Looks like ballast to me. Yep. Ballast. This is the uh, station we were on before. There's our beast. One thing I still find vaguely interesting about Europe is these. These tiny little couplers. As you compare that to the giant knuckles that the US like to run, then again, the US tend to run much longer trains. I don't want to climb down. I want to climb up. Well, don't tell me I can't get back in. Platforms at just the wrong height for the train, but we can do this. It's fine. There's always a way. Where's the door? There it is. Shut that. Shut this one. And back in the chair. Sorry for all the spinning around. Breaks off. Breaks off some more. Breaks off some more. Doesn't like rail driver very much this train. Just hold it and release. I should have done this before and charged up the brake pipe. Hello NJT, how are you? Why do you keep going off? I've done something wrong. What have I done wrong? Brakes are cut in, aren't they? And they are, because the instruction is cut out. Brake break is off. You just keep going back to zero. Set the air brake to cut in. But it is cut in! Main menu. Uh. <laughs> ah, it's better. Come on, a bit more. 
See, I thought that it was telling me that the brakes were cut in because the menu option was cut out, but clearly not. All right, off we go. Ah, uh, catching up with the chat. Michael wants freight. That's a good thing because we're in freight. Gradually building up some power to get going. We have a green signal. Red Arrow is having a good laugh. NJTE says, hey uh. NJTE says, who gave me membership? That was probably Cat. She does it all the time. Thank you, Cat. Red Arrow wishes we had the class 70. Hmm. Metra asks, remember the short-lived extreme trains? No, not really. Explain it. Michael Newbury asks, are your switches on? be a pretty heavy train it's uh yeah 2100 tons that's pretty heavy for an english train this little 66 is um working its proverbials off we're getting it well into the red now Whipping. Let's just leave it on notch six for a while. Down here they do have knuckle couplers. What's up with that? And that one doesn't. Some of them do and some of them don't. How weird. Oh, they must be coupled together in sets. Yeah, sets of four. One, two, three, four. Yep, sets of four. That makes sense. Petra says Extreme Trains was a show that aired every Wednesday at 10pm. Well, there you go. I don't think it ever aired in Australia. Easy thing, isn't it? How are the levels? Terrible. I'll slow down to 40. I don't think we're even there yet. It's lucky English railways are nearly all flat. You can actually move 2,000 tonnes with one locomotive. thing doesn't have dynamics so I'll actually have to use real brakes to uh, slow it down a little just to get it back to the 40 a punty little horn for such a big powerful locomotive by a 323.
Hey, here's a question for you. Is anyone still running TSW2? I don't mean have it installed. Are you actively using it? I had it installed before my computer exploded. Good news on that, by the way, is that uh, Intel are replacing the processor. Yay! And it looks like people would use some kind of app or website to do the quiz, so that's good. I shall uh, look into it a bit more. Try and work something out that will work for everybody. I'll try and prefer a web-based one rather than an app-based one. Because... I don't want people to have to install an app on their phones. So that's three no's on TSW2. Are there any yeses? Kind of curious, because I know that uh, Dovetail are working on getting its last release out, and I'm kind of curious if it's worth it. Sick Dark says, thank you for your wonderful perseverance to provide the stream the other night. I don't think people understand the hours you put in. Yeah, sometimes it's um, a bit of work. Today's stream's not too bad because I, I ran through the services the other day and thought, yeah, these ones are all right. But sometimes... After last week's stream, which um, I had a lot of problems, which turned out to be not Train Simulator at all. It was a um, bad CPU. Oops, this is why it wanted me down to 20, and I've slowly crept up again. After, after achieving 20, I crept back up. Naughty of me. That's alright, 30 won't be too violent. slight down gradient here so I'll just leave it tooling along at 15 because it'll pick up again To be really clear, I'm not asking for anything. I don't want anything. But uh, it's not just the hours you put into streaming. A 
lot of cash disappears into this. Buying software and upgrading internet and all sorts of things like that. And these are the things we do to have fun. Because I would probably play the game anyway, so why not share it with other people? I'd actually like to be able to stream more, but um, because I am in the beta program, more often than not, I don't have the public version of the game installed. I've got the beta, and I can't stream that one, even if it's a route that's already out. Because it uh, could have changes that aren't public. So I just can't take the chance. But I am contemplating a midweek time slot. Someone's not very reactive to the rail driver. Rates aren't terribly long on this route. all that thumping track. John Hudson T says he had TSW 2 and 3 installed but uninstalled TSW 2 when the disk space went into the red. All working fine without it. Yeah, it can be a bit of a challenge to keep games installed, can it? It is one of the downsides of uh, being in the the beta world is that I often have five to seven hundred gig downloads to do, and this is about as far as this freight will go. In fact, I've gone past the point. We could keep driving, but we'll just run into the end of the world. Actually, why don't we do that? Let's keep going. Let's drive this to the end of the world, because where we are now, we're coming off map. There is a little bit of track, so let, let's see how far we can go. Why not? Hopefully we won't get right down to zero miles an hour, or it'll end the service. Come on, you giant red thing, pick it up. There we go. We're going to drive until it won't let us anymore. I want to go and see how much of this is actually modelled. Romero, how are you? Welcome. Yeah, I quite like it because it's um, lots of short runs. And we're cheating at the moment because we're ignoring that we're supposed to stop. And we're heading out along this line here that ends rather abruptly. But I'm curious how much they bothered modelling. It looks like quite a bit of it has been modelled properly. even a nice viaduct. Lots of piles of rubbish. We just ran through the invisible wall then at the, the end of the playable area. This track will soon run out.
the modelling's not quite as precise around here because they're not really expecting people to come around here and see it. You can see cars sunk into the ground. Houses are just plonked here. This stuff's meant to be looked at from a distance, not up close. Uh, it just says you've reached the end of, edge of the playable area and chucks you out. You don't fall off. And the track side's getting bearer and bearer and bearer. So this is definitely only meant to be viewed from a distance. I remember the early routes used to always look like this. But they've uh, learnt. End of the world is coming. How far have we got to the end of the map? Ooh, not far. What's it going to look like? Is it going to look like Stephen King's Langoliers? Hey, you know what? We're floating in midair now. Oh, excellent. Whee! That's pretty funny. The end is nigh! I can see the end of the track. What is going to happen? <laughs> I think we should be outside for this. What do you reckon? Maybe on this side. This could be quite spectacular. It might be not. We'll see. How is this possible, NJT? I've driven beyond the end, the playable area. Normally, it, it, there's a point where it says you've driven beyond the end of the playable area and it just throws you out, but clearly it hasn't. And I can't say I mind. This is fun. What's going to happen when it gets to the end of the track? This is going to be the big question of the day. I think I want to record this. I will report that you actually can do this, because I doubt they even know that you can. Ooh, the track's disappearing into the earth. Yay! Oh, that's just so excellent. We're now below the ground. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, here's the real end. Is it going to just fall off the world? If we're going to fall off, we better do it in notch 8. Yay! <laughs> oh, that's funny. What normally happens is you get to a point where it says you've reached the playable area you just get a big white screen and it throws you out puts you back in the menu but clearly whoever made that route didn't think about that i chose replay didn't i what a silly person <sighs> that was funny oh, that was just funny i like that i will actually report that it does that but you know i like that uh, what are we going to do? Depot delivery. This is another one. This is something that I've been asking for for a long time, and I know lots of people have. It was fun, Michael. And yes, Ferromero, they should let you do this all the time. You know what I'd love to have in, in Train Sim World 3? Do you remember the test track from Train Sim World, from uh, Train Sim Classic? Good afternoon. Today you'll be operating a stopping service to Manchester Piccadilly. When you're ready, open the doors and begin boarding. So when I'm ready, what if I don't do it? What if I don't care? Oh. Everything else seems pretty happy. 
Let's flick down the other end. Tail lights. Set the reverser to neutral. I don't know anything else you want. Hello, Ryan King. You just missed us driving off the end of the world. And Ferramaro was right about falling into space. Yes. Off we go to dinting at maximum possible velocity, Captain. John Hudson T says, I think I saw a mod that lets you do this. If you would handy if you overshoot. Yeah, there's a thing called the God mod. Um, basically what it does is it gives you access to the console command. So I, I don't know if you know, but Unreal has a console where you can type in commands and it's used for testing games and manipulating them while during development so that you can see what's going to happen in situations that the players can get into that are actually hard to get into normally. And the god mode connects you to the console, because you normally can't get to the console in a published game. I think if you play with the god mod, go right ahead. It's um, I have played with it, it's a bit of fun. But just bear in mind that it will make your installation unstable, it will do bad things to the game, and it will crash a lot. So as long as you're prepared for that to happen when you're mucking around doing weird things to it, um, go right ahead, have fun. It actually is a lot of fun. I've, I, like I said, I have played with it. I don't think I would ever stream it. Because the, the challenge that it's got is a lot of people wouldn't realise what it's doing to the game. And the kind of people who play with it are the kind of people who tend to know a little bit about games. It's a fun one to use in the training centre, if you um, have a look at that. Hello, Ryan King. No problems being late. You can come in and out whenever you like. Um, in, in the training centre, you'd be surprised how much track there actually is outside the fences. So um, you can get out of the fences if you use the God Mod and put a train out there. You can't drive through a fence, but you can put a train out beyond the fence and it'll be fine. Unfortunately, the guy that um, was behind the training centre, which was Adam, has gone off to a different organisation. So I don't know that any of the grand plans for training centre that would use that additional trackage will happen. We'll have to see whether someone else takes up the mantle and, and wants to uh, guide it to fruition. go to Manchester. There. I think the train's moving. Yeah, it's picking up speed. I can see on the rail driver that it is. The train's a little bit jerky, by the way. I'm on my old gaming computer again. This is my new one. As anybody who watched my stream last weekend will know, was very, very unhappy. Turned out to be a bad CPU, but um, as part of diagnosing that, I changed the motherboards. I went and bought another board. And as part of putting it into another board, I actually broke a RAM slot in the new board. Which I have to say, all kudos to them, I've been dealing with MSI. The retailer wouldn't have a bar of me. But I've been dealing with MSI directly, the manufacturer. And I sent the board off to them 
earlier in the week and they're charging me $99 to replace it which is pretty good given the board cost me $600 so I'm very very happy with them as a supplier I don't mind giving them a shout out for behaviour like that so that board should be coming back to me um, Intel are replacing the processor because it did turn out to be a sad processor Basically what I managed to reproduce with some benchmarking utilities is anytime anything did some floating point calculations using the fourth core, the processor would explode. So, uh, hmm, it was a bit interesting. Lexic Dark suffered through the trials and tribulations of working on that while we were chatting away in the background. Because if you ever have problems like that, um, it is good to chat, even casually, about what you're doing. Because, oops, going a little quick. Because the other person will probably think of things that you aren't, or even if they don't, they can validate the things that you are thinking of doing to see whether it's a, a good idea or a bad idea. I mean, some of the things that we tried, I certainly wouldn't recommend to people. But... Uh, once you've gotten to a point where the thing is actually broken, it really can't get much worse. What you've got to be a little bit careful of is that you don't do something that voids the warranty so you can't replace it completely. But to actually get to the point with Intel, for example, to get a warranty, um, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to prove what you've tested. So basically, I, I wrote down everything that I was testing and all the different combinations of things that I was trying to do so that when I did speak to Intel, I could communicate with them up front. Here's all the stuff I've already done. And they reviewed all of that, and there was only one thing that they wanted me to do. And that was run a utility of theirs, and that utility of theirs, um, on top of everything else I'd done, did um, get us to the point within a couple of hours that they'd agreed to replace it. And they're pretty cool about it, because even though they send it off to another country, to replace it um, they organised for the courier to come and get it all I had to do was box it up uh, yes Ryan the current training centre and yes messing up a CPU because that the it's the 13500k i9 current generation um, that's worth about $900 in Australia and that board was about $600 so yeah it's a lot of money to uh, to lose so I'm glad it's getting replaced. And Lexic Dark, it was your job when we first met. You're right. We've both gone on to more interesting things since then. NJT is looking forward to running the 700 in the training centre. To me, the 700 sounds... I think I mentioned it before. It sounds like a car alarm going off, so... Uh, we'll see how it's received. Let's see what people think of it. Off we go to Hattersley. This scenario is kind of cool in that it lets you relax into... The, oh, this is just a normal run. I'll just cruise along... And then things happen. I haven't actually run the latest version of it. I ran it in, in um, beta a long, long time ago. But I haven't run the latest version of it, so it'll be a surprise for me too. I don't actually know what it's going to do. So we'll see. It is good when people honour the warranties. To I'm looking forward to finding out when I'll be allowed to stream the 700 because 
the ambassador, ambassadors, um, we'd been discussing for a long time being allowed to stream a little earlier than the public release. And, <coughs> excuse me. Dovetail decided to come to the party and let us stream 24 hours prior, which was really nice of them. And my argument, along with some of the other ambassadors, for why that we should be able to do that, is that it gets a um, an unbiased message out there, and it gets the content out there before the uh, before the haters get to see it. So you get to see a view of what it's like from a, a reasonable player's perspective. Did I just open the wrong side? I did. Pretty sure I did. Pretty sure. Yes. Didn't see anything. Can't see it. Look, look. <laughs> doesn't really help, does it? If I cover up that one, it really doesn't do much. Hmm. Ryan King says, my beef with the training center is it doesn't auto detect miles per hour versus kilometers and everything is in kilometers because the training center must be set in Germany. The training center um, has elements from the UK, Switzerland, Germany, and a little chunk from America. So interesting. Off we go to Godly. Ryan says he used to build PCs for myself up until about 2010 and he just couldn't afford it anymore. Building a gaming PC would be nice, although no good for my collection of TSW on Xbox. I can see why a lot of people go the console route, I really can. Um, and just off to my left there in fact is an Xbox S, which I do play on. I actually have got Train Sim on it. I should stream from that. Sometimes. Maybe a good idea, actually. Because then people will see the game on uh, Xbox. I might ask for a key for the 700 on Xbox. I think I've got the route that it's going to run on. I think. definitely understand the uh, attraction of the consoles. It's just such a simple thing and they just work. You don't have to worry about your video cards catching fire. You don't have to worry about CPUs dying because if it does, you just send the thing in, it gets fixed and it comes back. It's simple. The only downside of them is they're not particularly upgradable. You sort of have to wait for the next family generation of it. That's normal Lexic Dark. I think my work has recently only come to the realisation in how much I do because when I'm, I've been on a major project for the last 18 months, 100% dedicated to it, which I'm still doing other work, but more or less 100%. They've actually hired three people to do all of the other work that I was doing before I went onto this project. So they picked up three contractors to fill up that load. So they've got a much better idea of what I actually do. Which is good. And it's also good that they're all contractors because they'll go away. When I finish what I'm working on, which is due to go live in October, which is only about 60 days from now, 60 work days. Mutant 
the hide, ladies and gentlemen. Get your things together and get off me train. Brian says, sort of, he's still on the X-Bone, the Xbox One S, and it's not doing the greatest for some content, although I've had good luck with TSW DLCs released this year and since some memory tweaks. Yeah, they've done a bit for the consoles. There's been a, a bit of work going on. It runs fairly nicely on the um, Series S. There's some very noisy industry near us, isn't there? Oh, that place. Okay. Because I've got the S. I mean, for a long time, this has been a PlayStation house. And I have got it installed, thanks to the Ambassador program, it's installed on my son's PS5 upstairs. Well, I think he's probably taken it off now because he wanted the space back. And the, the old PS4 that he used to have. And then when people started having... Um, profile transfer issues and download issues on the Xbox. I went and found a second-hand Xbox S, which I probably bought from a guy that was just looking for his next hit. That was certainly the way it felt when I went to his house to pick it up. And uh, interesting experience. But I got that. I made some videos and to help people download stuff. Played it a bit since then. What is that up there? There's something floating up in the air there for a little while. Strange things you see in this game sometimes. Ryan says yes, and the Series S is pretty affordable too. Yeah, it's not not bad for what you pay. If it it's not as capable as the X by any means, but um, if you were building a, a PC that was the same specs as the S it probably cost you at least twice as much, maybe three times as much the PlayStation is a nice machine I'm not a great fan of the way Sony does a lot of stuff they're Big fans of platform lock-in. Caleb's Rail Films, hello. Says, g'day, I hope you're well. How many services are included in this route? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's something in the vicinity of a couple of hundred, including all the freight services. But um, when we finish this one, remind me, and we will pop out to the menu and have a look. But I think it's a fair few. You know, I can never unsee that platform fouling the line now. Every time I see it, it's going to annoy me. <laughs> and I'm sad that I never saw it earlier. Could have got it fixed. It's a bit hard now. Coming up to Guide Bridge. house hello what up you too or should i say what's up he says xbox is the best to him yeah i certainly think they're a pretty good creature a fault has occurred on the train and it needs to be taken out of service stock at the next station and throw the passengers out very good i like the way it says allow all passengers to disembark because, you know, that's not what happens. You have to walk through the train and you go, look, get off. I'm like, oh, I don't want to get off. Get off. No, I don't want to get off. I want to ride the train. You take me to Manchester, you bastard. I go, no, I'm not going to Manchester anymore, mate. We're going to go into the yard. Well, I'm coming with you. No, you're not. 
even on the heritage railway sometimes we have to put them off the train and they don't like it they really don't like it Then after you've opened the doors and you've chucked them off, then you've got to do, shut the doors and do a walkthrough and make sure they all did get off. And only open up a local door to push them out once they stay there. Because they do. They'll think you're just kidding. Ryan would like some more volatile situations in the guard mode. It would be nice to have some more real life, but I can see why they don't, because they want to keep their E for everything. And you don't want the uh, the angry dude. All right, passengers, this train's rigid. I'm sorry, but you've just got to get off. Get off. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Yeah, we're not going through. We're not going anywhere. You just got to get off the train. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in the yard. Go on, get off. You don't want to get off. All right. Well, tell you what. I'm just going to go back in my little cabin, and I'm going to lock the door, and I'm going to take you to the yard, and enjoy being there while the fitters fix the train so i don't know where you think you're gonna go but you know you'll be fine i'm just gonna lock me door okay it's funny that they don't get off mark b says he mostly plays on pc although he has some dlc on xbox s and X, sorry, and Xbox One. You need to contact the signaler before continuing. Oh, I was just going to drive off. Please use the contact signaler button on the GSMR. That's that one. But your family game can't have toilets. Didn't I just do that? I'm sure I just did that. Let's do it again. Signaler, driver of 323213. This is the signaler. Do you copy over? Is it really 213? Is it really? It is! Look at that! Do, do, do. Affirmative, yes, I hear you. Watch fucked up, mate. Oh. I was waiting for the E to confirm, and I pressed E, and it took me out of the chair, of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. I understand that your train has developed a fault. Yep, it's busted. It needs to be taken out of service. Yep, it's busted. Please wait a moment while I find you a clear path back to the depot. You already have, mate. You've given me a green signal. I'm way ahead of you. Do, 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 do. Mark B says he most... Oh, I've already talked about that. Yep. Uh, the one thing that puts you off using the Xbox was the price of DLC, even with the Game Pass. Yeah, there's not a lot of sales on the on the consoles. I quite like having sales. Signal says, Hello, driver. You should now have a clear path back to the depot. Well, we had one before. It's green, mate. Can we go now? Or should I wait? Vigilance going off, won't it? <laughs> I'm going, beep, 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 what's going on? Uh, and Ryan says, family game, we can't have toilets. See, joke's on me, because we actually are going to Manchester with all these passengers now. But we're going to go there and come out again. I'm not going to open the doors for them. I think that the real reason that they don't have toilets and... I mean, I joke a lot that we should have working toilets on the trains, but I really don't care, to be honest. Um, the reason they don't do it is there's to make a functional toilet is several days' work for a developer. And you, you, then you've got the, the artist, you've got the gameplay people, you've got the people who have to build all the bones into the things so the buttons work. Um, there's a lot of work in it. And that time... 
is, I tend to agree with them, much better spent on making the train itself better. So, I understand why we don't have any working dunnies. I always make fun of it, but I understand. Ryan says, we aren't calling a minibus to the yard this time, and no, there won't be cake. Yep, that's right. No cake for the passengers. And Ryan said, yeah, the regular Game Pass discount didn't stack with the loyalty discount for this route. Yeah, it's weird how the consoles work in pricing. And the console people are largely in control of when the sales happen, rather than the, the game developers. quite liking the lighting at this time of day. It's quite nice. So I've got a faulty train. Am I allowed to do full speed or not? Mm -hmm. John Hudson T in run 8, the dispatcher says I heard you the first time. Yes, that does happen. I do kind of like run 8, but you've got to be pretty serious to play it. You actually need to know your way around trains or you're not going to make it move very far. So if you've never tried run 8, folks, um, it's a very, very serious simulator. And if you play the multiplayer, generally speaking, they are very, very serious people. So, uh, mucking around isn't well tolerated. Yes, Lexic Dark, gameplay testing the toilet, and you'd have to test all aspects. What do you do? I test toilets. There's a job. <laughs> but when you think about it, someone must. Someone must actually sit on each new toilet seat design. Someone must actually use each pan to find out which pans stain and which ones don't. And which ones clog up and which ones don't. Someone must actually do that. So that job must be real. Toilet tester. And of course you have the different toilets in the different regions in the world. In quite a few places in Europe, the pipe that comes out of the toilet is so small that you can't put the toilet paper into the toilet. That's actually relatively common. Um, in America, the water gets so deep in the toilet that sometimes you'll end up with your nuts soaking in it. And then there's Australian toilets. And a lot of people come and see Australian toilets and they go, well, they're just weird, mate. We don't think they're weird. We've grown up with them. I think we have the best middle ground between the American toilets that never stain because they're totally full of water and the Euro toilets that you can't flush toilet paper down and you have to put a little basket next to the toilet because isn't that an interesting smell after a while? Drying poo. That's what everybody wants to smell in their house. Ryan King mentions plumbers, yes. I do feel sorry for plumbers. I do have, pardon the expression, a fairly shitty job. It's just a little bit shitty. The American thing is called Poseidon's Kiss. I could see that. Yes, when you first, if you go to America and you've never experienced one before, when you first go there and you go, why is it full of water? Why? UV lighting in a toilet I think would be a bad idea, Lexic Dark. Yeah, plumbers can make good money. Mainly because um, you're dealing with people in their time of need. 
because, you know, they really can't go on without a toilet. Lexic Dark remembers a show where the testing requirement for a flush was only five squares of paper. Yeah. I am a fan of using an adequate amount of paper because there's nothing worse than a brown finger moment. There's just nothing worse. No one needs that. How did we get onto this discussion? Really? I used to be a... Uh, youth leader in a very large worldwide youth organization and um, we used to have to teach the kids about toilets for jamborees and teach their parents what their kids would have to expect so the parents could make sure the kids understood what to expect when you've got 15,000 people using a couple of hundred toilets everybody's got to be pretty nice to the toilet or bad things happen and you get the odd creative kid who goes, I'm going to flush this drink bottle down because I reckon it's fun. And I'd much just rather they went home to their parents, really. And sometimes when we caught them, they did. Which would, of course, make the parents really happy because not only have they shelled out a couple of thousand dollars for their kid to go to this event, they've probably made plans that didn't involve the kid being at home. Ladies and gentlemen that stayed on the train, please note that we will be pulling into Manchester shortly, so your bet was right, we really are going here anyway, and yes, you got to come here on an express, but I hate to tell you this, I'm not planning on opening the doors, so you can stay in there. I look forward to your pressed hands on the window as I walk past. It's weird that they come in all the way into Manchester just to go back to Adwick, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manchester, end of the line. You won't be allowed off. Sorry. You should have listened. You could have been on another train. Would have been all good. Hopefully the scenario doesn't ask me to open the doors. That would be funny. Set the power brake to B3. Very good. I'm going to take the chance. You know, it is B3, but I'm betting you didn't watch the rail driver. Yep, you didn't watch the rail driver. Set the reverser to off. But you picked that up. Remove the master key. I'd love to know what it's doing at the moment. It's a strange noise it's making. Let's just jiggle the brake handle. There we go. Headlights, tail lights. Uh, don't need to shut down the GSMR. I turned off the safety systems. That'll be fine then. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, yeah, you're still in there. Yeah, you're stuck in there now. You have fun. Look at the ball. In reality, they'd be up hammering on the doors trying to force them open. 
going, come on, let us out, come on, let us out. You're violating our civil rights, let us out. Set it to day head and tail lights off. Don't really need to turn on safety systems for such a short run, but why not? Off we go to Ardwick. Ladies and gentlemen who stayed on the train, next stop is Ardwick Yard. Watch that first strip down. It's a uh, bit of a long one. Do you like the lighting in Manchester at the right times of day when you get all the shadows going through onto the ground? I hate to think what that does on the lower end consoles, but it looks good. our way through all the points. I'm just noticing when I reconfigured my stream deck, I've only got, what, eight, nine of the buttons actually doing anything? Because I can't remember what the other ones did, so I didn't configure them. I clearly don't need them. And they're not all fancy and colourful anymore, because I couldn't be bothered going and finding all the icons I had. Just using the default ones. Fortunately, all of my photos and videos were, are backed up to cloud. I haven't even plugged any of those drives back in. They're still just sitting there in the box. I'll bother plugging them all back in when I get the, the board back and the pro proper processor back. do have a shunting indicator or in old language it would be a calling on signal so we get a cruise off to Ardwick Train has a date with the fitters. In the earliest version of this, you changed trains and took another one out to replace it back in service. But I'm not sure if that's what still happens. We'll find out. John says it's funny to think that he started with Thomas the Tank Engine. Not really. A lot of people start with Thomas the Tank Engine. My kids used to love it. They both grew up not liking trains, though. Meh. Life. This is life. and people over there in Orange doing what people in Orange do best. Nothing. <laughs> Through the washer. I'm actually going into the right track. Oh, that's lucky. I am. Like 
points are all set okay. That's a good thing. That's more luck than anything. And as they say, more us than class. Do we apparently have jointed tracking here in the yard, up by out in the main line there. It's one of the things that amuses me when the people complain when they've watched a preview and they go, I can't hear clickety clack sounds. It's like, well, you know, on modern track, you don't. I just realised there's a track going out that end of the yard, up there, up to the right. Why didn't it bring us in there? Instead of going into Manchester. Hmm. Hmm. Electric Dark says a bunch of land to care people turned out to plant 130 trees up the back. I'm out on a sickie and they gave me some firewood. Blessed are the tree planters. Yes. Land care for the non Aussies are a. Um, quasi-government, quasi-volunteer organisation that uh, does good things like planting trees, cleaning up creeks, cleaning up the bush, cleaning up national parks and state parks, all sorts of good stuff. I have done a great many tree plantings with them. Set the power break to B3. Oops, not emergency. No, it watched rail driver this time. Very good. Oops, off it wants. Surely you want the tail lights on. Just turn these off. In this train, it doesn't actually make any difference. They're, they're fine with... Um, Actually, you know what? Let's walk through the train and abuse them some more. Look at that. We're in the yard, just like I said we would be. What are you going to do now, huh? You could have gotten off before when I gave you the chance, but no, you chose not to. Not even you in your DTG jacket. That's not going to save you. Sorry. It might be the first skivvy I've seen in the game. Yeah, you could have gotten off. But no, you too. Hey, do you know that you look just like her? We'll leave the doors open for someone who cares. Ah, stuck. Yeah, you should have gotten off. Had your chance. Had your chance, but you chose not to do it. No. Trench coat. Always be afraid of people in trench coats. There's no serial killers on the train, though. Ooh, maybe him. Yeah, he might be. He's got a ponytail. It's always the clue. It's always the quiet ones with a ponytail. Oh, well. Let's go and drive this thing instead of making fun of people. Blip. Master key. Neutral. Headlights. Tail lights off. Forwards. I won't bother turning on the safety systems this time. And we want to check that our manual junctions are set. So that one's fine. That one's fine. This one is not fine. That one's fine. They're fine. They look all good to the end of the line. Very good. Is there a depot hooter on this one? Maybe Northern don't do depot hooters. Maybe that's just a TFL thing. I can't see one. Like John says, interest in trains started from Thomas, and that's fine, that's good. And Caleb's Rail Films started out with Thomas the Tank and trains just got bigger. Still watch the old episodes even today. Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you? There's a lot of people who actually make their own episodes of, of uh, 
Thomas. Mattel tends to smack them, which I think is a bit sad because it's it's like fan fiction stuff. They should really just let it happen. But no, Thomas is a trademark. And if you um, rem if you're in Australian and you remember com Comedy Company with the Fat Gun, the Fat Gun, the Fat Gun, the Fat Controller, that was a good series. That was that was bad, Thomas, naughty Thomas, naughty Thomas was funny. Probably wouldn't get away with it on today's television, though. It was the kind of comedy that you got away with in Australia in the 80s. It just wouldn't happen anymore. John, yes, 30-odd years ago. It was rather a while. No security people on this train, yes. In Melbourne, we call them PSOs, Public Service Officers. They're the people that carry a, a taser and a bag of oranges. Because when you hit people with a bag of oranges, it doesn't leave bruises. John says, show is amazing, ended up kidding out in his whole bedroom as a railway as a kid. I've actually made several model railways, ranging from quite small to quite large, from uh, HO... ON30, I did an N1 once, I did an HON3 once, um, I've done it in L gauge, Lego, but I don't dare build a full size layout because every time I get into it, my wife goes, it's time to move house. We did have an agreement here that I could have half the garage, but now we store her Halloween and Christmas crap in there instead. So, And she goes, just build yourself a shed. And it's like, yep, great. Where's that 20 grand going to come from? Not to mention this particular city is very, very strict on what you can and can't build. So while I'd love to build an absolutely massive railway shed, it's never going to happen. And I do too many other things anyway to have the time to do it. Get me to put this into B3, but I already had. That would be why. Climb down from the train. Okay. Head over to the indicated train and prep it for service. Ah, I better turn these on or I'll never know which one it is. Okay, which one is it? This one. No, it's not this one. <laughs> I'd already gone past the marker. Where do you want me to go? This is one positive impact I've, I've had on this game. In earlier routes, they used to just get you to walk across the track. And I said, in a real railway, they don't. They walk around the track. You only go across the track when you can't avoid it. And these days, scenarios, insert the master key, very good, turn on the train, really? But it's on, why am I turning it on again? Open the cabinet door, oh, this is a new one. Must be on this wall. Oh, this is the cabinet you can only only open when they uh, 
want you to in a scenario. The rest of the time, see, the rest of the time it's not active at all. If you come back to this spot in the train normally, you can't do a thing. It's the pantograph up button. Neutral. Break test. actually have to press their buttons for this. I'm going to press this button. Now it's going to get confused. Press to close the doors on both sides. NJT says, why can't I download any libraries from Creators Club? Make sure you're still logged in. It forgets every now and again. Oh no, I've turned the trade off. Fine, let's turn it back on again. Yeah, just, just hold your horses scenario. I've got to turn this back on. Oh, lucky it worked. We are very lucky. Well, I'm very lucky, I should say. Yeah, all right, I'll move it this way. Testing everything, are we? Very good. Doing the full full nine yards on this one. We haven't gone up the back and done any tests, though. We do have headlights on. Very good. Gotta get out again and have another look. Yeah, gotta get out again. Yay. It's heading to day head. Get out and check and make sure you are getting day head. There we go, day head. Let me guess. Get out again? Yeah. Admittedly, this is fairly realistic. I didn't actually know they implemented this. This is good. Hazard lights on a train so the other trains can go around you. I wonder what that does to the globes. Lights off. Set the reverser to forward. Day head. Nice job. The train is now operation. You've been brought into Manchester Piccadilly. No, it can't. Because the door's open. And because we haven't gone down the back and checked out the back of the train, which you would have to do as part of your test. It's interesting half the doors are open too. Clearly they're uh, a bit like me. So tail lights, lights are off. I actually think the, the switch probably doesn't matter in this train because I think it's governed from the other end, but these blinds would be shut too if it was stabled, so you'd have to open them. Because you always shut them when you're stabling.
There we go. Off we go. Let's get rid of those markers. Off to the Ardwick Hedge Shunt. Alex07 Gaming says, Hi, and you clearly like BNSF. Hello to you too. John says his model was really cosy. Ten ended up like a model in Beetlejuice. Oh, I remember that movie. That was fun. I like Beetlejuice. Are the points set correctly? I think we've locked out. Yes, they are. And JT says he is logged in. I should close that poll, shouldn't I? So I'll have a crack at finding something that might work for the poll. I'm kind of thinking Mentimeter, because I've used that before. It means all the quizzes will be multiple choice, though, because they don't have another way to do it. But I kind of missed the quizzes, they were fun. And we used to use just YouTube chat for it. The other possibility is to use the um, YouTube question and answer thing. HAT says it can never download the things you don't like. Maybe it knows you don't like them and it won't let you have them. So it goes, you don't want this. This isn't delivery you're looking for in JTE. Now I've got to go up the other end. Off tail lights. Brakes to B3, and I'll do it with this rather than the rail driver. I didn't turn on any safety systems, so that'll be fine. We'll just run through the train because all the doors are already open. Whee! Tight squeeze through here. systems would normally be on in a train. You you as the driver don't have a choice whether you get to use safety systems or not. Hello Richard Lorbista. It's been a while. At least we know that we'll be travelling safely after all those tests. Yes! There are some liveries that make their way onto Creators Club that were made with the um, the private editor. It lets you upload them, but it won't let you download them, so they might be one of those. They tend to get removed after a while. Try subscribing to it in the um, website instead of in the game. So go to Dovetail Live. Uh, where are we going? Where are we meant to be going? Where are we actually going? We don't have a path. We're heading straight into another train. I think that I didn't set some points back there. So I think we better go back. Because I think we should be going out through the wash, personally.
there's a public editor in JT that people use, and if you upload anything made with the public editor to Creators Club, it'll let you upload it, but you can't download them. Lexic Dark wants to know what happened to the rest of the walk-around checks, which is a very good question, but, you know, if they implemented the entire testing sequence, we'd be here for half an hour. It does take a long time to check a train. go back as far as these points I guess I hope I can still get a path out I hope I didn't wreck this by not selecting the points we shall see coming up to the set of points I need to change so hopefully when I stop and change them it will be right I love the way it's triple points with one lever as well yay Sound like doors open then. Did doors open then? What the? Okay. Why don't they go open the doors? This time for sure, Ollie. Are we following a path? Yes. Caleb's Rail Film says, Apologies, have to start my own work now. I'll come back to the stream after it's finished, see about the services. Yeah, fantastic, Caleb. Enjoy your day, mate. Have fun. Got a whole lot of footage from uh, Puff that I need to work on and turn into a, a video or a series of videos. I recorded my last light up when I wore a camera on my chest, but it um, didn't go that well, so I'll need to reposition it and do it again. So I'll film my next one. yellow here. Richard says that he's enjoying the Glossop DLC. That said, they've been several UK routes released recently. Maybe time for something outside the UK again. Ah, we shall see what the future plans are. Wait for the roadmap, young fella. Yes, you can you can actually tell from um, release stream numbers that people are itching for something outside the UK because there has been quite a bit of UK content lately. Even in Train Sim Classic, it's been nearly all UK recently. There's an American one just came out, I think. But uh, we haven't been given that one. NJTE would like a modern peninsula corridor with the Stadler Kisses. I would actually like to see an electrified peninsula corridor. That would be cool. 
But while I wouldn't want it to see it as an upgrade to the DLC, I'd want to see it as a new DLC. And the reason I'd want to see it as a new DLC is because I still want to be able to drive the diesel ones as well. So I'd want to have both. Vigilance. And by the time it took us to get this train back into service, back into Manchester Piccadilly, which was... In real time, that was nearly 30 minutes doing that. There's no chance you're running the rest of your services for the day. You're going to have to skip a couple just to get back on time. NJTE would also like to see it as a new DLC. Something I would like to see, thinking of the Island Line, I would love to see the full Isle of Wight with the steam railway. That would be cool. But that one, I reckon, could be an extension. You could take the modern railway and just stick the steam railway on the end of it. John says he's quite enjoyed the UK maps, quite workable trips time-wise. Yeah, there's quite a few of them have got some shorter trips in them, which is good. Um, it can be a challenge to find the three hours necessary to do something like a home pass, for example. Or that hour and 30 for uh, Kassel. Or some of the other German routes that have got massive long trains. With massive long timetables. I saw a picture the other day of what I th think was a um, 702 that had crashed into a wall. Good work. That's all your assigned tasks for now. Another driver will continue this service from here. Let's see how you did. Let's start turning stuff off then, while we're waiting. As you do, because that's what you should do. There we go, it's all ready for the next bloke, just in time. I shouldn't say next bloke, next person. Claude! There you go, I'm pretty sure I've done this before, so I don't know why I got a gold medal. Anyway, that's all good. Now, we had a person that wanted to see what services there were, didn't we? Now, the service counts are a bit weird. I have to admit. So if we have a look at the timetable and the 323, it says there's 160. But at the same time on this thing, it says there's 105, and there's certainly not. So if we come into 323, it's a good what? So that's one page, and then 2G00. So that's about what? 10? About 20? About 30? Yeah, so they probably are about 160, because by the time you get all the way down the bottom, so that, that counts probably right for the 323. And then there's the rail tour services. So there's three where the uh, 47, sorry, the 40 leads. I think there's one where the 20 leads. No, two. I was wrong. There's two where the 20 leads. The 158, um, I think there's one drivable service. You, there are a lot more AI services that you get to see occasionally. The 37s, there's four 37 services. Uh, the 66, there's actually quite a few 66. So there's a fairly good selection of freight. There's probably, there's probably 30 there, maybe even 40. And it's a mixture of um, normal freights of various times and the RHTTs. The RHTTs uh, only turn up at some times a year. They're not there all the time. And there's the Jubilee, which I think has one. And I think that changes based on your time of year too. So if you come in here in different months and you come out and come back in again, I think sometimes you see a different service here. I think we should do some freight. I'll do a Class 66. Oh, we'll do the Great Western Express version of it. And... Let's grab, what were we going to do? 6E34. 6E, I don't know why I picked this one. 6E34. Is that the one? That's the one. It's at midnight. And we want to do January and we want to do snowstorm. We're going to stream in the dark, folks. You know that thing that they say you should never do? Don't drive trains in the dark on stream because no one can see anything? Well, we're going to. Because it's fun. 
Besides, the lighting on this route's alright. Alright, some instrument lights. Wait for a moment. No, I don't want to. I want to get ready. Um, do I have to cut the brakes in this time? Yes, you can barely see that. Menu, main menu. I think the brakes must already be cut in, but you can barely see that menu at night time. Let's get our brakes off. Brakes off some more. Brakes off some more. It's funny with the rail drive, you have to keep putting them on and taking them off just to achieve this. We have got a red signal, but we'll start crawling towards it. Not that you do that in real life or anything. Just warming our train up. Something we should do. Where's the heater? Yeah, fresh air would be off, that's good. Where's the driver's heater controls? Night headlights. Did Mr. On. Not that the game does anything with it. Instrument lights, desk light, cab lights are off, tail lights are off. Heater, heater commands over here somewhere. Oh, maybe there's not. I thought there was a way to turn the heater on. You can turn the hot plate on. Oops, we're going backwards. More power! What is this train? Train of hoppers full of something. I certainly don't want to go backwards because we were heading towards a red signal going back there. And we have got a calling on on this one now. So in we go, if we can get it to move. Let's try some sand. There we go, we are moving. And there's another freight coming in on the other side with some containers. Yeah, some of those freights in the US are rather long. Now, we've definitely got a calling on. No, it's gone off. Oh, I might have taken too long to get going, and I've been blocked in by another freight. Because the calling on has gone off. Now the question is, is that freight going to go away, or did I take too long? And I don't reckon he's going to be going anywhere, because, uh, stalemate! <laughs> You're going to Liverpool Lime Street, so you are going to head out that way at least. Hmm... I think I took too long there, because I did have two little white lights and they went off. So I think we might just do this. Otherwise, this is not going to go well, because those other trains might clear, but they might not. I think eventually they would, but... So do we have... We don't have two little white lights on yet, so let's get this set up. Let's not muck around this time. Let's put our headlights on. Not time. Hey, mister. They're all on. Let's get our brakes off. Let's get our wipers on. Now, do I have little... It does look like I've got little white lights on, but I'm not actually sure. the cab light on for you so you can see a bit. Have I got the brakes all the way off yet? No, I haven't. Let's 
just get out there and grab a look. And actually, I don't have two little white lights on, so maybe I do have to wait for those other trains. Hmm. Not that we're going anywhere yet, anywhere. See, it really does look like I've got two little white lights on from here, but they're not on from outside. And we're not going anywhere, but the brakes are definitely off. starting to move, so I'm not going to roll back into the other signal this time. But I think I will have to wait for those other trains. Because I do very much have a red. Let's see if the loco breaks enough to hold this train or not. comes the other 66. Now the question is... We definitely can't go very far. Let's go and have a look on the PIS and see when this train's due out. Well, he's got a yellow signal actually, so... Oops, no, go, go up there. Go down there. Let's go see what this PIS says. Well, he's due out in a minute and a half, so he'll leave. And then the other freight will go, and then we'll be able to go. So we may as well just sit out here and wait for him to go. But well, He's got a driver. Alright, we'll sit here and railfan this. We'll wait for this one to go. And then we'll see the other freight go out behind him. And then we get to go. Ah, <sighs> sorry. Yeah, we're, ac we're actually on the freight. I could switch to the other freight, I suppose, but that's going to go off the map. Do you know, it even feels cold sitting here in the snow. Isn't that funny? Oh, geez. He's due out in about 30 more seconds, I think. He was due out at 8.09, wasn't he? So he should go. Yep. Due at 09. So he's he's gonna go shortly. See you like trains, Lexic Duck. Your dad likes trains too. He solved the giant layout problem. He built it somewhere else. There he goes. He's closing the doors. Yeah, this block, that one will go red, so the one behind it where the freight is should go yellow. So the freight should be able to move up now. And it is. Can't go very far though, so we'll have to see how long he is. Hopefully he's not a monstrously long train and he'll clear. Yeah, it's not very long. Or is it? Uh, it's hard to tell in the snow. I think I see more carriages, actually. I'm 
speeding up, so the signal behind him must have gone red too, gone green as well, so. Let's get back in our cab and get ready to go again. His last carriage is going through there. Maybe? Very hard to tell in the snow. Yes! I don't want to give it too much because it'll just stall and get stuck. I was just told off by Lexic Dark. My brakes are off. They look like they're off. There we go. We're slowly starting to move. Let's drop a notch and just hope we're not slipping in place. There we go. I kind of like that, having to wait for a couple of other trains. That's cool. Yippee, as they say. And we need a bit. We need a bit of warmth. So let's put the hot plate on. It's an old camping trick. If you want to make your tent warm before you go to bed, you boil a pot of water on the stove and put it in your tent. It warms your tent up. It's only water, Lexic Dark. What are you worried about? talking about train loads of coal before that's what this is or is it biomass or is biomass just a modern word for coal I don't know because coal is basically biomass it's just very old biomass it's just halfway to being diamonds So next week I'm going to show off a selection of stuff that's available in the sale. NJTE is trying to convince me to use one of his scenarios, so we'll see. Let's see if I can make that work. Because Creators Club and I aren't always friends. So I'll be doing a mixture of TSC and TSW next week. Stored sunshine, that's one way to look at it, looks dark. Heavily compacted dinosaurs and plant matter.
Sick Dark says to wrap a heated brick in newspaper was the old camping hot water bottle. Yes, that works too, or a rock. Just have to be a little bit careful putting a rock in the fire because sometimes they explode. But yes, have done that. I used to use the saucepan trick in my caravan too. It'd heat up a pot of water on the stove and just leave it sit when you went to bed. Because once you're actually in bed, you don't really care anymore. But when you first go, it's nice to be warm. Train headlights that actually do something. Wow. Yesterday I was watching this video of uh, the big boy steam engine helping to move a stalled freight and it vaguely amused me that only three or four cars up from the steam engine, so it would have been visible to the crew, there was a flat car covered in steel I-beams or H-beams and the straps had come loose and they were dragging on the ground and it would have been visible and no one did anything about it. It's a derailment waiting to happen. And it's a good reason why you should never stand too close to the railway when you're out gunzling or foaming or rail fanning or whatever you choose to call it. Because uh, you might get hit by something. You wouldn't want to put your feet in warm water, Lexic Dark. You'll piss yourself. anybody got any requests for a service they'd like to see after this one if not that's all the ones that i had written into my little program for today but if there's anything that someone would like to see we can do that Share this chick's umbrella here. Guy Bridge we go.
So if you hadn't noticed on Steam, there is the Steam Summer Sale. And both Train Sim World and Train Sim Classic have got a whole lot of discounts on only on Steam though, sadly. Um, there's also the Humble Bundle where you can get Train Sim World. And I think for uh, $24 Australian, you can actually get a whole lot of stuff. Reminds me, why don't I give away a key for something? There's an idea. Where are my keys? Where are my giveaway keys? Let's find a giveaway key. I know you can't see what I'm doing off to the side here. Well, I hope you can't anyway, because you better see all my keys. Uh, what have we got to give away? Why don't we give away a copy of Clinchfield? There we go. Well, there's probably not many American rail fans in this today, would there be? Maybe Cathcart Circle. I'll give away Cathcart Circle. How's that sound? Let me know if anyone takes it. If no one takes it, I'll give it away in a future stream. Apparently my son's playing Warhammer 3. How about that? Should turn off that overlay, shouldn't I? Cathcart, so he doesn't want it. Does anybody want a key to Cathcart? If you don't, I'll delete that out of the chat and uh, give it to someone else in a future stream. That just lets us go to Notch 8 in a tunnel. Richard has Cathcart. I'll delete that one out of the chat. Maybe we'll... Uh... What else have I got? I've got uh, Clinchfield. I've got Northern Transpennine, Brighton Mainline, Neverka Dresden, Tees Valley. Any of those seem interesting to anyone? Slip. You 
got a machine that can run the precursor, Alex? Or Lexic Dark? I do have a key. After guide bridge? No, that's it. Horseshoe pass. Do I have horseshoe pass? As a giveaway key. I'm not actually sure. Let me have a look. Basically, I bought the humble bundle and I'm <laughs> giving away the stuff that's in it. Uh. No, I don't have Horseshoe Pass. Uh, I've got New York Hicksville for American Things. Peninsula Corridor for American Things. I've got the Baby Bullet for Peninsula Corridor, if anybody's looking for another locomotive. But no Horseshoe Pass, I'm afraid. Michael says if I had a key for something not yet released, he would take that. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> That's what everybody wants, isn't it? snow has stopped. What I'll do is I'll um, chuck that Cathcart key into a post. for a moment and then just end Boop. why does it make you wait for a moment I've got some TSC stuff too I think if any of that's interesting I've got uh, hmm, got Sherman Hill on Train Sim Classic got uh, London Faversham I've got Clinchfield Actually, there's one there that I would have thought I'd want to install myself, but there you go. Ah, timetable. So, what would people like to see? Is there anything other people would like to see? Or we'll finish it up on a high note there with finishing that freight. Anything of interest? Otherwise, I will. Next week I'll be doing a mixture of TSW and TSC, so if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, my Discord is available on the channel, so you can um, get to that and dive into it and um, come and say hello and let me know what you'd like to see. I know that uh, NJTE has already pushed a couple of scenarios my way, so we'll see if I can make either of them work. And we will go from there. So that's been Golossipline, folks. I'm sure we'll come back and play this again because it's fun. Um, alongside the other hundreds of things that are fun. So all good. So I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Thanks for hanging around and uh, taking part in the chat. Good as always. All right, have fun, folks. See you later. Oh, and we should have a... I think we might have a quiz next week. Bye now.
Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.